who instructed Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami to compile the later pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because Chaitanya Bhagavat mainly focuses with on the Navadvip Lila of the Lord. The pastimes of after he took sannyas are quite briefly explained in Chaitanya Bhagavat. So you should be the one who writes this. Why? You have heard at Radha Kund from Raghunath Das Goswami directly. You should be writing this. And all the other devotees were blessing him. Raghunath Das Goswami was blessing him. I'm speaking. You write it. Rupa Goswami had blessed him. Bugarbha Goswami, Lokanath Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, they were Kashishwar Pandit, all these great Mahants of Braj Bhumi, they were all blessing him. Right, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami felt himself totally unqualified. Raghunath Das Goswami wrote books. <laughs> How can I write? I just heard from him. Bugarbha Goswami, such a scholar. Lokanath Goswami, such a Vaishnava, direct associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Haridas Pandit, he's speaking so much the glories of the Lord. How could I be the one to read it? I mean, I mean to write it. This is going to be the biography of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's later pastime for all time. Perhaps he was thinking like this. He felt no qualification. But that was his qualification. That's why all of these great saints chose him. He was... If he was going to do it, it was only because he was doing it on the order of the Vaishnavas. With the order of the Vaishnavas comes the grace and the power of the Vaishnavas. That's my only qualification. But still he wasn't convinced. <laughs> After getting the instruction and the blessings of all the devotees of Vrindavan, of the Gaudiya community... He went with them to the Madan Mohan temple. And there was a pujari named Gosai who was worshipping the Lord. And while he was doing his puja, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami with folded palms prayed, Do I have your permission to do this? And just as he prayed, a garland slipped off from the body of Govinda Dev, right at that moment when he offered the prayer. And Gosai, the Pujari, lifted that garland and immediately placed it around the neck of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And everyone there cheered, Hadivo! <laughs> Confirmation. And Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, with all the blessings and all the encouragement of all the devotees, on that very day he began to write Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. But while he's writing, he's continuously remembering. He's continuously remembering his position. So, so many chapters he reveals his heart. I am lame and ill-advised. <laughs> Only by the mercy of Madan Mohan can I possibly do this. I'm blind. I'm like a blind and lame man. Only by the mercy of the Vaishnavas is this possible. In another place he says, I am like a lame man trying to cross mountains by writing this Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is only by the stick of the mercy of the devotees that it is possible. So I, I am suffering from, 
from the disease of material desires. And I'm suffering terribly due to the boils of envy. In this condition, I am helplessly falling at the feet of the great physician, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he's praising Vrindavan Das Thakur. He said, before writing Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, in my heart of hearts I surrendered my life and begged for the blessings of Vrindavan Das Thakur. He is the real person who, has, who is qualified to glorify Lord Chaitanya. He is Vyasdev in the Kali Yuga. And he goes on and on and on to explain the glories of Vrindavan Das Thakur and his devotion and his writing. And he says, I am just taking whatever little scraps and remnants that Vrindavan Das Thakur has left behind and I am chewing that. It is only by his grace that I can write anything. He's giving giving credit to everyone except himself. What a state of bliss that is. He loves, he loves everyone with such gratitude. What ecstasy that is to the heart, to love someone with gratitude. Rather than just be plagued by the burden of false ego. That is the difference between material life and spiritual life. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains the story of how he was with his, how Miniketan Aramdas was offended by his brother and he tried to defend his brother, I mean defend Miniketan Aramdas and defend Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who was Miniketan Aramdas's master. His brother honored Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he considered Nityananda Prabhu to be pretty strange. And because Vinaketa Ramdas was a friend of Nityananda Prabhu, he would not respect him. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami told his brother, accepting Lord Chaitanya without Lord Nityananda is like accepting half of a hen. Prabhupada explains what that means that the front half of the hen is eating, but the back half is giving eggs. Yes? So, you make money with eggs, but you lose money by feeding him. So just cut it in half. Throw away the front part, or just keep the back part. What happens? The hen is dead. So similarly, trying to accept Lord Chaitanya without Lord Nityananda, you lose both. Nityananda Prabhu was so pleased with him, he appeared to him in a dream that night. He was in the garb of a cowherd boy with a his, with his stick, decorated with flowers of Vrindavan, his eyes rolling in ecstasy, and he pointed in the direction of Vrindavan and said, Go to Vrindavan, Kaviraj. Go to Vrindavan and you will attain the fulfillment of all your desires. All things will be attained. Go. Now he was, he was living at home very comfortably. He woke up the next morning, left for Vrindavan. Didn't take anything with him, just left. That was his faith. And he explains it's only by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu that I'm here. And when I came to Vrindavan, I got the shelter of Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, and all of their associates. Only by their mercy, I fall at their feet. And he's so humble. He goes to the extent where he gives all credit 
to Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, to the readers. He's giving credit to you and me. Who are we? He's saying, all my readers, please forgive me <laughs> if there's any mistakes or flaws in this writing. I'm only doing it on the order of the great souls. But he's taking the dust of the feet of every Vaishnav, even the lowest neophyte who's just started chanting Hare Krishna. This Paramahamsa is taking the dust of their lotus feet and worshipping them. And then he worships anyone who reads Chaitanya Charitamrita. By your enthusiasm, you are empowering me to write. This is Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He was right. He began the writing when he was in his nineties. Hare Krishna. Can you imagine beginning? And every verse is a poem. It's not just a book. Tens and thousands of verses of pristine, elegant poetry. How do you do that? He's not only writing beautiful pastimes, but he's presenting the deepest, most profound philosophy in eloquent poetry. Nityananda Prabhu and the Goswamis, he explains, they're writing this through me. He said, I'm just like a parrot. In one place he says, I'm just like a wooden doll. <laughs> and Madan Mohan, and Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, they are making me dance. That's how this is being written. We hear these stories. But why are they so important? If we really want to love Krishna, we cannot imitate these great souls. But we have to value the characteristics that they embody and try to emulate them. Our aspiration should be to adopt this kind of consciousness. Otherwise, why are they repeatedly revealed to us in these great scriptures? It's nothing new. Prahlad Maharaj is revealing this utter humility And this utter gratitude as his qualification to take shelter of the Lord. And it just so happens, not by accident, that every single saint in our whole Gaudiya Sampradaya says the same thing and lives by the same principle. Now, yes, we cannot imitate. But... This is what we should be striving for. This is what we should be influenced by. Whoever we are. 